y'all doing? All right, I'm going to read some scripture. Matthew 24, 14. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. Let's have every head bowed and every eyes closed. Our Father in heaven, thank you for this Good evening, Lord, and thank you for all that you do for us. Thank you for the blessings you bestow us, Lord. Thank you for allowing us to see another day. Father, I pray for anybody who's actually in this building or listening on the radio, Lord, or anywhere as far as on the broadcast. I pray in Jesus' name to come to a saving knowledge before it's too late, Lord. I pray that you just help us to continue to keep walking on for you, for the glory of God, anointing our pastor on high, and I ask all these things in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Right. This is from the... Uh, Tonga Ono Nations from John Coleman. Dear missions partner, thank you for all your mission help because of the calling and equipping of God, also because of your prayers and mission support. We seeing souls saved and receiving help with many other needs. I stay busy preaching, teaching, and soul winning. We are also reaching souls with food delivery, Bible distribution, and home and hospital hospital visits. Please continue to pray for us. In it is not getting any easier. Satan is always active and wants to hinder the work of God. But all marching orders from the Bible says to look up and keep pushing forward. The Bible says, Greater is he than you than he is in the world. God is faithful with equipping power. We do need your continual prayers and support because some of our mission partners have passed away and now are in heaven. Uh, Thank you for helping me to do that. Mission Servants of, for Jesus, John Mavis Coleman. That's all I have. Thank you, Brother Sean. Let's all get hymn books then. As we stand and sing tonight, turn to page number 223. We'll sing all three verses of Springs of Living Water. Thirsted in the barren land of sin and shame And nothing satisfying there I found But to the blessed cross of Christ one day I came Where springs of living water did abound Drinking at the springs of living water Happy now am I, my soul they satisfy one in the house of the Lord tonight. Does anybody have a request that the preacher didn't get when you came in tonight? All right, he did a good job. I'm going to ask Brother Essen to come on up and he's going to get us started tonight. And y'all be sure to pray along with us. Everybody got a prayer list? Okay. Brother Essen. All right. 
Let us pray. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you, Jesus, Lord. Thank you for our many blessings, God. Lord, we just thank you so much for uh, allowing us to be able to come in your house tonight freely and just be able to worship you, Lord. We thank you for that opportunity. Lord, we just thank you so much for uh, sending your only son, Jesus, down on the cross for our sins. We're so thankful for that tonight, Lord. Lord, I just ask you just to please be with our service in tonight, God. I pray that you just open up the windows of heaven, Lord, and just pour us out blessings, God. Lord, we pray you just meet with every heart that's in attendance, Lord, listen by way of internet or bro uh, eternal broadcasting, God. And we pray that you just uh, bless every need that's on the hearts of your children, God. Lord, we just pray in Jesus' name that you please be with the family of T.W. Ryan, O Lord. Pray that you just comfort them and bless them, Lord, and just help uh, give them the peace that passes our understanding, God, and just bless them in a mighty way. Lord, we ask you to please be with uh, Pastor Yancey, Lord. We just thank you for him, Lord, and his faithfulness unto you. Pray you just continue to give him a vision for our church, Lord, and just uh, uh, bless him tonight, Lord, as he preaches, Lord. Pray you just uh, give him the right words to say at the right time, and continue to be with his health needs, Lord, and just continue to be with Wendy and uh, be with the family, Lord. Lord, we ask you to please be with uh, church attendants, God. Pray that you just uh, continue to uh, um, fill your house up, Lord. Just help us to uh, uplift you and all that we do, Lord. And just help us to be that city on the hill, Lord. And just uh, uh, help us to uh, just invite people, Lord. And just uh, see many people come in your house, Lord. And just uh, surrender to your will. <clears throat> Lord, we ask you to please be with our tithings and giving, Lord. Lord, we ask you just to please help us just to uh, surrender, Lord, and just uh, give from our hearts, God, and just uh, uh, bless everything that we do, Lord, and give back to you, Lord, and just uh, help us see souls saved and lives changed because of it, Lord. Lord, we ask you to please be with our deacons and trustees, Lord. We thank you for them, Lord. I ask you just to continue to bless them and their families, Lord, and just uh, work a mighty work in their lives as well. Lord, we ask you to please be with our new building, Lord. We pray that you sell this, uh, sell this property, Lord. I pray that somebody comes uh, here as we're, before we get we're done praying tonight, God, and just uh, we ask you just to uh, sell this property and just send somebody our way, Lord, and so we can get in that uh, land and blaze, Lord, and just start building our, our new church and just be able to uh, do big and uh, great things for you out there, Lord. Lord, I ask you just to bless the Blair construction and plans and Mike Miraculous and the architect, Lord. Pray that everything just goes smoothly according to your precious and holy will. <clears throat> We ask you to just continue to be with uh, internal broadcasting, Lord, and WTBI broadcast. Uh, we just thank you so much for those ministries, Lord. Pray that it just uh, continue to reach people, uh, continue to reach the lost and the courage and brethren through that, Lord. Lord, we ask you to please be with Believer Bible Institute, Lord. Just be with all the uh, teachers and students, Lord. Help them just continue to dive in the Word of God and just draw closer to you, Lord. Lord, we ask you just to please uh, be with our Sunday school and teachers, Lord. Uh, we ask that uh, every, si uh, every uh, Sunday school class is quadruple in size, Lord, and just uh, give the teachers the vision to help their class grow, Lord, and just help us to uh, die further in your word. Lord, we ask you to please be of our youth ministry, Lord, uh, and Kingdom Kids, Lord, we ask you just to please uh, bless both of those, Lord, and just help them all grow, God. I pray you just send as many kids, Lord, so that we can uh, train them in the way they should go, Lord, and when they're old, they shall not depart from it. Lord, we ask you to please be of uh, Tuesday Bible study, God. We ask you to continue to bless that ministry and just help people come and just uh, uh, study your word and draw closer to you as well. Lord, we ask you for the peace of Israel, Lord. Pray you put a uh, hedge of angels around them, God, and just uh, uh, fix their eyes completely on you, Lord. And we ask the same uh, for our present nation economy, Lord. Pray that you just help us turn our back on sin and fix our eyes completely and solely on you, Lord, and your purpose for our life. Lord, we ask you to please uh, bless, be with the conflicts in Ukraine, Iran, Iraq, North Korea, Afghanistan, and Syria, Lord. Pray, pray that you just be with our soldiers and keep them safe as they're fighting for our freedom, Lord, and just uh, be with them and bless them and bring them back home uh, safely, Lord. Lord, we ask you Please be with our visitors and new converts, God. Uh, we pray that uh, people uh, that uh, we got saved, Lord, pray they come and follow and believe us by baptism, Lord, and just uh, get discipled in your word, Lord, and just pray that you just uh, uh, fill your house up, Lord. Lord, I ask you to please be with hands, Lord. I just thank you for that ministry, Lord. Pray you bless every member, God, and bless our upcoming events that we have there, Lord. Just pray that you be the uh, focus and center of everything that we do, and pray that we see souls saved and lives change of it, Lord. <clears throat> I'm going to ask you to please be with the salvation needs of Nick Albano, Carl Amos, Wade Ayers and his health, Brandon and parents, Amanda Banks, Ashley Banks, Brian Banks, Daniel Banks, Rachel Bowen, Steve Banks, Jackie Bryant, Ashley Cobb, Tommy Connor, Jamie Connor, Ann Crutchfield, Clint Davis, Terry Deer can, uh, has cancer as well, Robert Deer, Lester Dotson, Michelle Doss, Joel Dudden, Tom Hardy, Jesse Hor uh, Horbett, Brandon Gossie, the Horsley family, Jimmy Jones, Henry Law, Kenny Law, Benny, uh, Billy King, Mike King, Stephen King, Ryan and Tyler Kinder, my dad, Sean McCall, Chase Minner, Haley Minner, Darren Moore, Lauren Myers, Michelle Owen, Bradley Payne, Margaret Poston, Mark Reagan, 
Brian Reagan, Caitlin Sanchez, Victor Sanchez, Mark Shearer, Timothy Shearer, Dylan Smith, Sean Stout, Barbara Stout, Cindy Thompson, Kimberly Thompson, Madeline Thompson, Megan Thompson, Melvin Thompson, Dustin Turner, Buddy Travis, uh, Tyree Warshing, Joyce Watson, Megan Wilson, David Wood, Jessica Wood, Wade Woods, Carl Wall, Tommy Vincent, and Les Young. Lord, we pray that you just uh, save uh, every name that's on this list, Lord, and just uh, put a burden on our heart to go uh, present the gospel to them, Lord. Just pre present that opportunity to us, Lord, so we can see some names get off of this salvation list. And I pray that they accept you as their Lord and Savior. Lord, I ask you to please be with the health needs of Riker Bowling, Lord. Uh, we're coming from surgery. Jamie Cole and his kidneys. Earl and Deborah Connor, Jack Dale, Tony Dalton, Logan Drawn, Linda Dern, Joyce Earp, Roy and Cletus Evans, Payfan Holly, Wayne Hodges, Audrey Hawkins, Maureen Johnson, David and Gail Jones, Angelina Miriam, Shelby Martin, recovering from surgery, Gary McCullen, Toby Moore, Linda Moorefield, Nancy Newton, Bobby Nichols has asthma, Loretta Nichols recovering from surgery, David and Patty Murray, Angie Oates, Vincent Serapiota, Alan Shorter, Cheryl Podovinsky, Ann Pruitt, Robert and Vicki Reed, Steve Richardson, Cindy Rutherford, Nat and Barbara Saunders, Mike Smith, Bill and Judy Snow, Carol Tickle, Ricky Toller, Anita Ward, Angel Underwood, Ellington Wallinson, Leon Connie Wiles, Harold Yancey, and Amy Young. Lord, we ask you just to please touch their health needs, Lord, and just heal them, Lord, and just uh, ask you just to please uh, be with the remainder of our prayer list, Lord, and just show up in a mighty way tonight, Lord. And we just love you and thank you for all you do for us in Jesus' name. Let me pray. Lord, as we continue on with our prayer list, we ask that you be with those with uh, diabetes. Lord, we pray for Amanda, Ron Allen, Sherry Bry, Logan Camino, Debbie Eagle, Vicki Miller, David Murray, Kendall Sage Oaks, Rod Rains, Lee Rains, Danny Ward with his knee, Wendy and uh, Wendy Yancey. Uh, we pray for those in the nursing home, Lord. We pray for Dale Leffer, Susan Carter, Catherine Collins, Susan Dooley, Patsy Ferguson, Curtis Martin. Francis Roberson, Joyce Thomas, Diana Wagner, Vidal Crane, Michelle Johnson, and Kyle Baldwin. Uh, Lord, we ask that you be with uh, Mary Lone and Roy, Adam, uh, Roy Evans, who are suffering from Alzheimer's and dementia. Um, pray for those with COPD, Lord. Pray for Mike Mills, Jim Phillips, Sheila Richardson, Amanda Watson. Uh, pray, uh, pray for those who get back in church, Lord. Pray for uh, the Clary family, Buddy and Carol Garland, Cassie, the uh, Cassian family, Kirsten McBride, DJ and Celsi, will be my father, Gary Graham, Jonathan Reed, Glenn Tickle, Daryl Tickle, and family. Uh, I'll pray for our, uh, our friends, family, and neighbors, Lord. <clears throat> I ask that you be with uh, Chris Atkins, uh, Austin Begley, Vinner Begley, Carol, uh, Carol Burnett, uh, Carol Bonnet, Phyllis Clary, Anna Clary, Raymond Clary, Gene Connor, Amy Ferguson, Mary Heiss, Damian Lewis, Nick Madigan with his heart, Chelsea Martin, Danny Martin, Keith Moorefield, Donald Owen, Diane Pritchett, Dale Ray, Florence Richardson, Vicki Schelling with his cancer, Glenn and Nancy Slayton, Lisa Spencer, Bob Tamson, Alan and Shirley Taylor, the Vickers family, Garland Watson, Preston Watson, and Jim Wyatt. Uh, Lord, we pray for those with cancer. Lord, we ask that you touch their body in a mighty way. Lord, we'll be with uh, John Atkins, Portia Atkins, Kathy Allen, uh, Bobby Alley, David Bale, Tom Barley, Robin Baker, Scooter Barton, Vanessa Burchett, Eli Burke, Pam Carter, Ronnie Carter, Tammy Cox, Barbara Clarkson, Bill Cooper, Ann Dales, Pat Dalton, Melody Dickerson, Thomas Dix, Kellen Dunn, Jamie Ferguson, Mary Phyllis, Tammy Fries, Amanda Garter, Abel Garden, uh, James Griffin, Sherry Grundy, Michelle Hall, Red Hardy, Karen Hilton, Kevin Hicks, Anika Hodnett, Kevin Hopkins, Carlton Hoskins, Pamela, Pamela Hudson, James Hunley, Emerson Kitts, Ronnie Lawless, Linda Mahangos, Joseph Miller, Billy Joe Moran, Karen Nations, Hayden Neal, Tony Phillips, Mary Nestor, Ruth Patterson, Tasha Ritchie, Donald Ricketts, David Roberson, Patricia Robinson, Naomi Robertson, Linda Wyatt, Robin Stallings, Jess Waller, Frank Wilkerson, Dave Wilkinson, and Lisa Wilson. Uh, Lord, I ask that you uh, just be with the remainder of this prayer list. And so all these prayers according to your precious and holy will is in Jesus' name I pray.
Our fathers, we continue with the uh, bliss, Lord, I pray in Jesus' name with all the special requests and just meet their needs. Lord, I pray for Donna Amos, Jenny Burt, Skylar Bowen, Matthew Bryan, Tanya Curry, Dale Cleary, Mandy Graham, Mallory Hamlet, Sean Teresa Horvitz, Janice Hodges, Kay Van Hunt, Pastor and Sister Hussey, Eston Lewis, Shelby Martin, Christy McBride, uh, Mike Diane Mills, Angie Moore, Sean Patterson, Sarah Piotr, Betty Price, Bonnie Rains, Amy Saunders, Kevin and Kim Snow, Eileen Tickle, Hannah Fitton, Landa Walker, Matthew and G. Williams, Vicki Reed, Daniel Roach, Lois Witt. Lord, I pray for all our scholars, students. Lord, just continue to just watch over them, Lord. I pray in Jesus' name, just use them in a mighty way. Tyler Auburn, Becca Clarity, Alyssa, Bradley Gotze, Carlton Hoskins, Trinity Langley, Elizabeth Lois, Joanne Jennings, Dakota McBride, Caleb Moore, Amber Massilia, Caleb Pooley, Mary Sue Wilson, Tori Underwood, Christine Yancey, and Jason Yancey, Lord, and I ask all these things in Jesus' name, Lord, I pray for all our, I'm on the wrong page, <laughs> all right, I pray for all our missionaries, Lord, I pray in Jesus' name be with them. Teddy Angel, I pray for Tamara Aldridge, Virginia Assembly, Independence Baptist, Randy Ashcraft, Becca Baptist Missions, Govinda Al, Emmanuel Bala, Evangel Earl Carson, John Coleman, Mike Sue Cook, Stan Cullen, Keith Cullors, Krista Jackamo, Fortuna Dratez, Faye Dykes, Daniel Farrow, David Gibbs, Virgil Galen, Jimmy Harris, Larry Henderson, Adrian Hernandez, Lois Howe, Patrick Hubbard, Buster Kinsey, Frank Kinsey, George Kinsey, Nestor LaBrugan, Bobby Lee, Jimmy Long, Sergio Mahano, Sterling Rescue Missions, Nathan Miller, National Pastors Cuba, National Pastors Pakistan, Dr. John Mitchell, Alan Nye, Mike Peckoff, Michael Peckoff, David Rawson, Ken Ream, Evangelist Jeff Worley, Dan Ritchie, Demetrio Rodrigo, Roloff Ministries, Jason Serbo, Tabernacle Children's Home, Hal Williams, and David Weiss. Lord, I ask all these things in Jesus' name. We'd like to remember the pastors and evangelists that we are able to support, and we'll pray for them after we call out all the names. We got, and we have Scott A. G., Jamie Adams, also Joe Arthur. Bobby Brooks, Melvin Campbell, Kenneth Cloud, Jeff Chapman, Scott Dean, Carlton Duck, also Larry Fitzgerald and Joy Flanagan, Joy Foley, Donnie Glass, Frank Gooch, Mike Harp, Jason Holly, Wayne Hudson, also Larry and Donna Johnson, John Kinsey, Derek and Tim Kaiser, Terry St. John, also Steve Lamb, Carol Martin, Dave Peters, Dan Schelling, also Tim Schelling, Davey Shelton, Mark Snowden, Donnie Stevens, Philip Stout, the Tobert family, Brian Warren, also Jeff Woods. May we pray. Heavenly Fathers, we approach the throne of grace tonight. Lord, we are humbled and thankful that we're able to be here. And we pray tonight, Lord, that you would supply the needs of each one of the men's names that I've called out, Lord, that we support. We pray, Lord, that you would help them supply all their needs. And God, you just be with them each and every day and help them along the way. We know that being a, an evangelist and a pastor like that is a, is a tough job. So, Lord, we just pray that you'll be with them each and every day and each step of the way that you would as they continue to spread the gospel. And we pray, Lord, that the, the gospel will continue to go forth and that we'll see souls saved and lives changed. And, and Lord, we just have a great time serving you, and we're so thankful. Lord, that we're able to come and worship you in truth and in spirit. Father, we love you and thank you for loving us most of all and for what you did at the cross of Calvary. Again, I say we love you and thank you for all that you do for us. For us in the precious name of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and I do humbly pray. Amen. All right, take your hymn books and turn to 200 and, I'm sorry, 147, Leaning on the Everlasting Arms. Stand, sing all three verses, Leaning on the Everlasting Arms. Fellowship, what a joy divine, leaning on the everlasting arms. What a blessedness, what a peace is mine, leaning on the everlasting arms. Leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all alarms. Pilgrim way 
leaning on the everlasting arms. Oh, how bright the path grows from day to day, leaning on the everlasting arms. Leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all alarms. peace with my Lord so near, leaning on the everlasting arms, leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all alarms, leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting arms. Thank you, you may be seated. All right, as the ushers come take the offering tonight, let's be faithful. Boy, didn't we enjoy the cantata Sunday? Amen. Brother Earl, this Sunday, the wild man from Hartwell, Georgia. I'm telling you, I called him yesterday, and I said, uh, how you doing, Brother John? He said, I'm doing great. His wife said, he's lying. He's been sick. <laughs> Pray for him. He said, I'm planning on being our Saturday. I said, well, I'm looking for you. So he's looking forward to being with us Sunday morning, Sunday night. And uh, then uh, Dr. Uh, Larry Johnson will be with us the following Saturday. We're not going to go with a meeting this time. We're just going to have him on Sunday morning and Sunday night because he'll be back with us in, uh, for homecoming. So there'll be no revival meeting. He'll be with us that Sunday, though, Sunday morning, Sunday night, just like Brother John Mitchell this week. And uh, boy, it's hard to believe we're halfway through April. And uh, IRS man's looking at us between the eyeballs. Got to get them taxes done, get them turned in, and, and then we'll finish out the month. Say amen. All right, let's ask God to bless the offering. Father, we thank you, Lord, for allowing us to give. Lord, you gave first so that now we can give. You gave physically that we might give spiritually and physically that your work may be done. Lord, we thank you for Brother Earl. We thank you for the cantata. We ask you to be with Brother John as he preaches Sunday. And Lord, Brother Johnson, as he preaches the Sunday after, God, just help us to continue to see your hand upon our church. Lord, help your people be faithful and dedicated. And Lord, to put your work first so that we might be prepared for your return. Even so, come quickly, we pray now in Jesus' name. Amen. tonight. Take your Bibles and turn to Nehemiah chapter 9. Nehemiah 9, 13. Talking about adoring the Savior. We've talked about his proper name, his powerful nature, his personal nurturing. And uh, then we talked about persecution nullified. Last time we talked about the provision of the needed. And we looked at Psalms 23 and how God's provided everything for us. Now let's look at principles were noted. 913 to the book of Nehemiah Thou camest down also upon the Mount Sinai and spakest unto them speaking of the nation of Israel from heaven and gavest them Israel right judgments and true laws good statutes and commands and madest known unto them by thy holy Sabbath and commandest the precepts statutes 
and laws by the hand of Moses, thy servant. God has always made it clear to his people what he expected of them. And it's no different today. God's made it clear through his word. His principles are noted. But the question is, are we noting the principles? Are we listening to them? Israel had a problem. God gave him the commandments. He came down on Mount Sinai, gave Moses all the law and the commandments. And when he come down off the mountain, they were out there worshiping a calf. They, they were just total rebellious. And we look at that and we say, them sorry Israelites. How sorry were they to do such a thing? Well, I got news for you. Baptists are worse than Israelites. Preacher preaches on something, you go right out and do just the opposite of what he tells you to do. That's rebellion in our heart and soul. It's inbred in us through our ancestry. And we have to learn to get over it. We have to learn to stop being rebellious and be repentant. To repent and do right and come close to the Lord. I was studying for Bible Institute tomorrow night on the book of the Revelation. And the one thing that was noted after each seal is that even though God was pouring out judgment on man and the world, they repented not. They repented not. They repented not. They repent. Man's heart is hard. And it takes the principles of the Word of God to soften your heart by the power of the Holy Spirit. If you don't have a tender heart, you're in trouble. You haven't shed a tear in a while, you got a problem. You haven't felt compassionate towards someone in a while, you're in trouble. Because we ought to be tender hearted people, not terrorists. All terrorists are not in the Middle East. There's a lot of terrorists in the church terrorizing each other. Shouldn't be that way. We ought to have tender, compassionate hearts that are brought on by the Word of God. He says true laws. Laws are to keep you out of trouble. Laws are written to protect you and others. Good statutes that helps us get along with each other and to know how to love each other and how to care for each other. We're losing that. We're losing that. I, I'm just going to be honest with you. When I was a kid and somebody died in the neighborhood, the first thing was somebody was knocking on the door, taking up money for flowers. Then the next thing, you was carrying food over to the people's houses so they'd eat. And then you'd go to the family night. Then you'd go to the funeral. You'd stand by them through that hard time. I'm telling you, nowadays, people don't do anything. And it's heartbreaking because we've lost that compassionate touch and how to care for each other and how to love for each other. We're so isolated. All we think about is as long as I got what I need, I'm not worried about anybody else. That's, that's the wrong way to think. What if Jesus thought that way about me and you? We'd be on our way to hell tonight and maybe I'd already be there. But it hadn't been for the Lord. And then and commandments. Commandments are to help you serve. Commandments are to help you know the, uh, what the Lord needs you to do when you're in the army. If you've ever had that blessed privilege to be in the military, they give you commandments so they can get, a teamwork, get the teamwork done to protect the nation. Amen? Well, God's give us commandments to get the church work done. Right, Ken? Oh, Ken's going to be on y'all the next couple of weeks. We've got some stuff we got to do. You need them, don't you, Ken? Amen. And if they don't volunteer, they will be? <laughs> Drafted, amen? But anyway, we've got to work together. you got to get by. You can't say, well, I'm going to let so-and-so handle it. I do my part. You've never. Now, let me tell you something. I don't care who you are, whether you're the pastor or who you are. You never completely do your part. Never. Well, I'll do more. So who told you to start comparing what you're doing with other people? That's not in the Bible. That's not in the Bible. You worry about what you're supposed to do, and then let them worry about what they're supposed to do. But see, that's how we get in trouble. We start comparing. Well, so and so's not doing much as I'm doing, so I'm going to cut back. Well, that ain't going to hurt so and so. It's going to hurt the church. Amen or amen. You can't compare that way. Uh, look, you do your best. And God will do the rest for you. We've got to do our best. Don't worry about what other people are doing. Don't compare and don't say this and don't say that's, that's the devil working. 
That's the devil working. We don't compare. You don't know what that person's going through. You can't walk a mile in their moccasins. Amen or me. You got to walk in your shoes and they got to walk in theirs. So quit this comparing stuff. Commandments are given for you to do. Not for you to say, well, that commandment's for this one, that commandment's for that one. No, every commandment's for all of us. See, uh, that's where the church gets in trouble. We start analyzing. The Bible never says, analyze thou the word of God. What does it say? Obey the word of God. Fulfill the word of God. That's what it says. So he made them known, and we're to follow them, the precepts, the statutes, and the laws. God always has made his principles, as well as his promises, known to man. Here's a fact. Write it down. My mama used to say, put it in your pipe and smoke it. Okay? Write it down. This is a fact. If you don't do the commands, he doesn't have to keep the promises. Let me say that again so it'll sink in. If you don't keep the commands, how in the world can you expect God to keep his promises? Because you've got sin between you and God. There can't be sin between you and God if you want God to bless you. Is that too deep for you? Do I need to go through that again? <laughs> hey, it's a fact. You have to obey. Now, first of all, the word is honestly written. Look at Romans 3.1. What advantage then hath the Jew, or what profit is there of the circumcision? Much every way, chiefly because that unto them were committed the responsibility of the oracles of God. You see, it wasn't the, it wasn't the fact that they were keeping the law that made them special. It was they were sharing the law to help everybody that made them special. And they thought it was all about them. It wasn't about the Jews. It was about the Jews getting the law out to other people so it could help everybody. Make sense? Now, for what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? God forbid. Yea, let God be true, and every man a liar, as it is written, that thou mayest be justified in thy sayings, and mayest overcome when thou art judged. Now there's a long gap right there. Let me go back and read that again. That thou mayest be justified in thy sayings. We're to share the word of God. We're to share the gospel. We're to publish the word of God. Say amen. That's the job of the church. But there's a long gap between, between being justified in thy sayings and might just overcome when thou art judged. That gap is this. God expects every one of us to do that. God expects every one of us to be a part of the work of God. He expects every one of us to obey every commandment, every statute, every law. He expects us to be faithful as a team to God. And then when we get to heaven, it's not going to be team judgment. It's going to be individual judgment. Now you say, preacher, how is that going to be? How in the world is, going, is God going to judge all them people in seven years' time? I have no idea, and I'm not really worried about it. I'm worried about what he's going to say to me. I ain't worried about how long it's going to take to do it. That, that, look, God, God can do anything he wants to. Now can I give you some yanceology? Y'all look like you need some because you look like you're mad as a wet sitting hen. Uh, let me give you some Yanceology, okay? Yanceology means it's something I think it ain't in the Bible, okay? You know, I believe God could take all of us to heaven, judge us all at the same time, and be done with it just like that. Because he's God. And I kind of hope it's that way. Here's the Yanceology part. That way I ain't got to know where you messed up, you ain't got to know where I messed up, ain't none of your business, ain't none of my business, we can get it done, get it over with. Say amen or amen. That's Yanceology, not in the book. That's just what I hope. That's my high hope, okay? Because there's a long gap. But you're going to stand before God. And listen to me. What this verse is saying, and mightest overcome when thou judge, the only thing that's going to help you get a good report when you get on the other side is did you keep the laws, the statutes, and the commandments? Amen? If you stuck to them and you, you lived by them and you, you, you did everything God told you to do, when you get to heaven, you're not going to get a bad report. The man that led me to the Lord. I had one man bring me to church, and another man led me to the Lord. Both of them died in the last six months. And uh, his funeral will be Saturday, old T.W. Reiner. And he, uh, when he, I, I, I read his obituary today, and I got to thinking, 
Boy, I'll tell you one thing. When old T.W. stands before God, he's going to be a blessed man. Because I got to think about all the people he led to the Lord. The man preaching his funeral, Bobby Lee. Y'all know Bobby Lee? Guess who led Bobby Lee to the Lord? Yeah. T.W. Reiner. Who led Walter Yance to the Lord? T.W. Reiner. Man, he's got a whole lot of preachers been backing him up for a long time. Say amen. He's going to have a lot of rewards when he gets to heaven. And then when I read that his son was having part in his funeral, I said, wow, he even influenced his own kid. Say amen. When you stick by the stuff, folks, in the end, you're going to come out okay. But if you don't, you're not going to come out all right. That's why we have the laws and the statutes. That's why he has honestly written it down for us. What if we had to, had to dig it up and guess it out? I'm glad we don't have to do that. It's all written in the Word. It's, 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 it was a holy God that gave his commandments and his oracles. It's, a man, uh, it's mankind that's deceptive and dishonest because God cannot lie. Titus 1, 2, in the hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie had promised before the world began. This was all planned out before we were ever created. God's an orderly God. We should be orderly people. You don't obey the law to go to heaven. The blood takes care of that. But you obey the law that others might go to heaven with you, and your life will be useful. All right, let's look at B. Hear the way. First of all, uh, honestly, the scriptures were written. Now, B, hear the way. Isaiah chapter 30, verse 21. And thine ears shall hear a word behind thee, saying, This is the way. Walk ye in it. And when you turn to the right hand, and when, and when you turn to the left hand, you say, preacher, I can't figure that out. Why, what is he talking about when you hear a word behind you? Well, let me help y'all since y'all look so confused. Let me educate y'all tonight on what that's talking about. Do y'all remember when y'all was a kid? Do you remember when your mama went to the tree and got a switch? And if you didn't, that's what's wrong with you. Your mom would go get that switch and she'd take you by the seat of your drawers. What, what? You go and honk. Huh? Come on now. Turn right. Turn left. Where was she at? Behind you. <laughs> Isn't it good to have a good mom and daddy behind you? Say amen. I want you to know you got a good God behind you. And he's not going to let you do what you want to do. He's not going to let you get away with what you want to get away with. He's trying to lead you. He's trying to direct you. Sometimes it's through love and affection. Sometimes it's through the pain and the correction. But he's always trying to lead you and guide you. And, and he says very clearly, we must strive always to be a faithful hearer of the word. Whether you're on the internet tonight or here, the reason you're here is you want to hear the word. You didn't come to hear me do a, a, a lecture on this or a dissertation on that. You come here for me to give you the word of God so you can hear from heaven. So God will tell you to go to the right. God will tell you to go to the left. We all need instruction. If you ever get to the place you don't think somebody needs to instruct you, you're the one that needs it the worst. We, listen, if you stop learning, you're dead. Two ways. If you stop learning, you're dead physically. And if you stop learning, you're dead spiritually. You gotta hear the word. You gotta be here. I remember one guy one time, poor William Faust, bless his heart. He'd go to church and he'd sit there. He couldn't see and he couldn't hear. And when he didn't want to hear what he didn't want to hear, he'd turn his hearing aid down. I'd get to preaching on country music and he'd just turn it slam off. Then he'd turn it up to hear what I was hearing. If I'd got off of it, he'd leave it alone. If I hadn't, he'd go on back down until I got off the subject. He went on. He was something. Well, there was another blind man one time, a fellow told him, said, son, why don't you just stay home? You're blind. You can't see. You can't hear. He says, yeah, but God, the devil knows whose side I'm on. He knows which side I'm on. Folks, we got to get back to going to church. I know I'm preaching to the choir tonight, but we need to pray that people start coming back to church. Why? Because it's for their own benefit. We need to be reminded. We need to be reminded. The other night I was going through YouTube, and I come across a, an album by the Hoppers from back in 1990. 
four. And it struck me because Brandon was born in 93 and Jason in 95. So this was 94. This was in the middle. And that's what caught my eye. And I, I turned that thing on. And I started listening to some of them old songs. And it brought back memories of, of the, those times when I listened to those. See, music could do that to you. Won't music take you back to where you used to be? And they got to singing Heavenly Sunrise. And they got to singing Here I Am. I mean, singing all those good old songs. And I can remember back going to hear him sing it here and hear it sing a message. Everybody knows what I'm talking about. Going here, going there, going yon and here. And just the good times I had with my old people. And, and uh, uh, just, you know, just brought back memories. It reminded you of good things. You know why you come to church? So the Word of God can remind you of who God is and how you ought to adore him. Amen? How you ought to love him. The Bible says in James 1.23, For if any man be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is likened to a man beholding his natural face in a glass. You see, folks, the reason there's a mirror in your bathroom is so you know what everybody else is looking at. <laughs> Try to help them a little bit. Say amen or amen. And, and folks, look, use that mirror physically, but use this mirror right here Spiritually, Amen? Look at this thing and make some corrections. Listen to what it says. It's not going to hurt you. It's going to help you. It's going to help you. Now, it was honestly written. We need to hear the word. Now, let's look at see. Psalm 119, verse 72. The law of thy mouth, that's the Lord, is better to me than thousands of gold and silver Folks, I want to tell you something. The last thing somebody's worried about when they're on their deathbed is what, the, what, what money they can spend. They're not worried about money when they die. They're worried about crossing over to the other side and eternal life and spiritual things. But you know, we spend most of our life worried about physical things when we do spiritual things. And we're going to be sorry about that when we get to heaven. God's promised to take care of us physically. I was young, but now I'm old, yet I've never seen the righteous forsaken or seed begging bread. Why are we worried about physical things? God's going to take care of us. If we're his children, he's going to provide for us every way physically we need. We're to worry about taking care of his spiritual needs. We're here for his service. Say amen. amen. We're here to serve him. Thy hands have made me and fashioned me. When you stop and think God made you who you are for a purpose and a reason, who you are is, is what he needed. And where he's got you is where he wants you. Listen carefully to me. It's just like the fella who wanted his yard as pretty as the next door neighbor's backyard. And he asked that next door neighbor, he said, how in the world have you got such a pretty backyard, all that green grass. He said, that's where my septic tank and drainage field is. Yeah. You know, look, the grass is always going to be green on the other side. You think, but it's not. It's not. That's just the devil's way of upsetting your apple cart. It's just the devil's way of trying to get you to get out of God's will and into his will. Because look, folks, his way is narrow and straight. And it's not complicated. It's not confusing. But the devil's way is complicated, it's confusing, and it'll finally destroy you if you listen to him. Listen, we need to hope in his word. It says, give me understanding. Lord, help me understand who you are so I might know who I am. Don't listen to Hollywood. They say don't listen to nobody else and be who you want to be. That's a tragic mistake because we're flawed. God is not flawed. He's holy. He's holy. He's right. He knows what's best. We shouldn't be striving to find out who we really are. I don't want to know who I really am. I might scare myself because I see what some of these people are doing who are finding themselves. I thought last night I, I got all excited. I said, wow. I said, the wheel is coming on tonight. 
Oh, the ball, they drop, they drop the balls. That's what that's what's called, the dropping that ball. I don't know what they call it, but anyway, I was, I was looking forward to that. Enjoyed that. It was good. That couple won $1.3 million. I said, how do I get on that show? $1.3 million. And uh, then the next one was, uh, oh, my goodness, I was gone, The Weakest Link. I love The Weakest Link. And I was all excited because a new season of The Weakest Link was going to start up. And they had twins on there. Anybody else see it other than me? Okay, I'm not the only fan. I don't know about y'all, but when it got to them two dudes in the pink, I got scared. <laughs> I mean, pinky pinky all over, earrings in both ears, lipstick, and eyeliner, and oh, they were so sweet. I thought to myself, they done looked too far down inside themselves and then got messed up. Say amen. They done, they done found themselves, and if they knew how stupid they looked, they'd back off. Say amen. Oh, they thought they were prima donnas right there on TV. They thought they were something. And uh, I, don't, I don't think they won. I think they lost, didn't they? They lost. Thank God for that. Hallelujah. But they got all the way to the end. They almost won the money. But I'll tell you something. We don't need to know who we are. Who we are down core is not good. It's the worst. But knowing him makes us better than we are. Makes us better than we are. See, them fat dudes, them fat twins on the end. See, y'all go home and watch this on Hulu or something tonight because y'all got y'all excited about it. Them two fat dudes on the end, they were smart, weren't they? But they got rid of them fat dudes because they didn't want to deal with the smart ones. <laughs> and they went to them. They got rid of them two fat dudes on the end. They lost. All, they banked all that money and then got thrown off. That's what the devil will do to you. He'll load you up and you think you're going somewhere and he'll send you right off the side and you don't get nothing. Folks, we don't need to know who we are. We need to know, we need to know who he is. Boy, that's good preaching. I have to pat my own foot and pat my own self on the back. Say amen. amen. Listen to me. That I may learn thy commandments and have understanding of them that they that fear thee will be glad when they see me. Now, what have I told you about that word glad? I was talking to a preacher on the phone the other night trying to educate him. He was talking about, he was preaching on the word glad. I said, well, let me give you something on the word glad. I said, the word glad deals with what's something that's already happened that makes you happy now. He said, I hadn't thought about that. I said, I know, that's why I told you. Hey, when we're glad about something, it's because of something that's already passed, something that's already happened. He said, look, they'll be glad when they see me that they listen to me and they loved me and they learned from me and they lived for me. Say amen. We're going to be so glad that we did what we did in this life. Other people don't like what we're doing. Other people don't appreciate what the church is doing. That's okay. We're not doing it for them. We're doing it for him and them. Amen? We're doing it for him and them. And so he says, when they send me because... I have hoped in thy word. I want to tell you something. All my eggs are in this basket. All my eggs are in this basket right here. And I love eggs. I had four of them this morning. I love eggs. Fried, scrambled, boiled. I don't like them raw. But I like them every way but that. And I don't like to lose eggs. Amen? I like to use them, not lose them. Therefore, I put all my eggs in his basket. I, my hope is in what he says. I'm trusting him in what he says. If he tells me I ought to go to church every time the door is open, that's what I want to do. If he tells me I ought to pray more, I, I wrote a man a letter this week, and I encouraged him. I begged him. I said, spend as much time as you can praying. Because do you, you do realize every prayer you pray, God keeps it in heaven. And in the last days, they're going to they're gonna parade all them prayers out in heaven. Anybody going to know that you prayed? I told him in that letter. I said, I don't want to have a notebook of prayers when I get to heaven. I want a library. Say amen. I want to know I've been talking to God. I've been speaking. The Lord says pray, I want to pray. If he says witness, I want to witness. I want to lead people to Christ. I want to see people get saved. I want to do everything he's told me to do. Why? Because when I see him, I want to hear him say, well done. Thou good and faithful servant. 
It pays to obey and follow God's promises, His principles, His precepts. His promises are from Him to me and you. His principles are from us to Him. And that His precepts are us to each other. That's what they are. That's as relationships all the way around, how we're to live with God and with other people. And the Lord help us to how to live with ourselves. Amen. How do we live with ourselves without being ashamed? God's word will mold us and make us into men and women of God with a testimony for righteousness. I, I told somebody the other day, after we talked about T.W. dying, I said, I can't think of a bad thing to say about T.W. Ryan. And he's 80 years old. Can't think of a bad thing to say about him. Can't. He lived a life of righteousness. He lived a life for God. And he's glad of it now. He's glad of it today. He's entered the joy of the Lord. You see, God's words will open our hearts and minds to wisdom far beyond our own understanding. I want to be able to understand things the way God sees it because sometimes I don't understand things right. I don't understand things clearly. I don't see them clearly. I may be too selfishly bent to see it straight. And if you're honest with yourself, you're the same way. Our selfishness makes, messes up our view of things. But when we get into God's Word, God's, listen, God will show us things we never thought of. We never, never expected them to learn and to know. His words build in our spirit a strong hope that cannot be crushed by the wicked world's pressures and persecutions or enemies' trials and temptations. There's a lot of things to mess us up. He tempts us. He tries us. The enemy's against us. The world's not on our side. The world's trying to make it hard on us. I studied in the tribulation period. <clears throat> a lot of things we couldn't see 50 years ago, we can see clearer today. And you know, the more I study the book of Revelation, the more I begin to realize that, folks, when that tribulation, they're go we're going back in time during the tribulation. Thank God we're not going to be here. But you see, they're going to get these nuclear weapons in the Middle East. Iran, Iraq, they're going to get them. Syria, some of them already got them. Pakistan, they're going to have these nuclear weapons and they're going to use them during the tribulation. And the world as you and I know it today ain't going to exist no more. It's going to be gone. Read your Bible. Folks, look, when, when, when the time comes for the tribulation to come, nothing's going to be like it was. Everything is going to be torn up, destroyed. So, you know, they're building their life on this world. The Bible says that in, the, in an hour's time, economically the whole world to be destroyed. One hour's time. Nothing, nothing will be worth anything. They're going to sit back and see the world burning. Now you read it, it's in there. The world's burning, the smoke is building, and they're cursing God, and they're, they're hating everything. I'm glad I'm not going to be here. Amen. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. Say amen. amen. Oh, listen to me, folks. Psalms 119, 49. Remember the word unto thy servant, upon which thou hast caused me to what? Hope. This is what's going to make us hopeful. You know what a sour person does? He never reads his Bible. A sour person never trusts God. A sour person never believes the Bible, but a joyful person, this is all they think about. Say amen. This is all they believe in. This is all they trust. It gives them hope. This is my comfort in my affliction. You're going to have them. <laughs> Afflictions are coming by the boatload. You better have something to hope in when you're in trouble. Oh, listen to me. He says, for thy word hath quickened me or give me life and joy. Verse 81, my soul fainteth for thy salvation. But I hope in thy word, 116, uphold me according to thy word that I may what? Live and let me not be ashamed of my hope. People who hope in money, people who hope in people, people who hope in things, people who hope in themselves, they're going to be ashamed. But we're not going to be if we hope in him. All right, here's the one you're looking for, the last one. 
Colossians 1 5. For the what? That is laid up for you where? Your hope's not here. Your hope is sitting at the right hand of the Father in heaven, and your hope's coming back for you. It's coming back for you. I'll never forget the first time I ever mowed somebody's grass that won't Ruby or Tom's, my mom and daddy's. Ruby worked with a lady over here in the mill who didn't have no chillin. And Ruby understood that because she didn't have no chillin. And the lady was crying one day. She didn't have nobody to mow her grass. Ruby said, I know somebody mow your grass. <laughs> so she come home. She said, I need you to go over on the hill and mow Virginia's grass. I said, Virginia who? She said, she lives on the side of the mountain. Daddy's going to take you over. And me and granddaddy got in that old Vega. I was little then. I could get in one. Got in that old Vega and put that lawnmower in the back. And he was sticking out. You know, that used to stick out the back window. That lawnmower sticking out. Here go me and granddaddy. Over White Oak Mountain and down the side of the hill to the left. And we got to Virginia's house. And I got the lawnmower out and gassed it up. And granddaddy said, <clears throat> Son, I'll be back to get you in a little while. <laughs> what? I thought he was going to sit there and wait on me. He said, no, I ain't sitting here waiting on you. I'll come back later. Because you didn't know my granddad. What he said was law, and you didn't question him. Say amen. And I'm watching him pull out the driveway, and there stood Virginia, and I didn't know Virginia. I didn't know she was going to shoot me, kill me, fry me, or put me under the house. Worst of all, I was worried, but is she going to pay me? Huh? So I was, I'm sitting there the whole time mowing the grass. I'm worried, is granddaddy going to come back and get me? Is granddaddy going to come back and get me? I kept looking up that road looking for granddaddy to come back and get me. When I hit that last stroke, I come that little Vega. Right over top of the hill, down the hill, he come back and got me. I said, thank you, Lord. I really won't worry about me getting paid. I just want to get back to Ruby's house. Say amen. I was 12, 13 years old, and that was a long walk down beside that mountain back to Dry Falk. Amen. I knew that was a long way to go. So he got me. She slid $5. You said, $5? Let me tell you something. Back in them days, $5 was some jacks. Amen. I was tickled to see that $5 and stuck it in my pocket. Then granddad on the way home says, boy, you owe me a dollar for gas. <laughs> he never got it and he didn't ask no more but I think he was joking with me but you know I had that I had that little worry was Granddaddy going to come back and get me you realize somebody's going to come back and get us even if you're dead <laughs> even if your daddy's going to come back and get you that's our hope whether we live or we die we got something to look forward to Wherefore ye heard before the word of truth of the what? The gospel. All the truths in the gospel. Your sins are forgiven. They're washed in the blood. God's not mad at you no more. And he's coming to get you. That's the gospel. And you know that takes care of every problem you got. Every problem you got is handled in the gospel. Hope in his word by hearing his way because it was honestly written. Stand to your feet. Father, I've preached your word as best I know how tonight. I pray the word of God will help people hope in the heavenly Father who's on the right hand of the Father in heaven who's coming back to get us. Even so, come, Lord, we wouldn't be upset one bit if you come back and got us right now. Lord, when you're ready, we're ready. But till then, Lord, help us hope in thy word. May your people come leave their burdens on the altar tonight. Lord, may they leave them here for you to take care of because we believe that you're in heaven and you do care about us. Bless this invitation. Speak to every heart I pray. Let's leave our burdens with God. Come on. Come tell them your hope.